Welcome back. It's Philip Bickle, Legal Tyranny. It's July 23rd, 2021. And what I've got for you here is an old article from the LA Times. If you do a keyword search right now, as of today, on Google, you can actually get a hit on this yourself and read along with me. You have to do a keyword search on this section right here. If you put that in exactly like that, it'll pop up. Now, this was something that was uh, published back in 1994. Got the date right here. So this info has been around for a while. The internet did help it spread, but it was still, you know, a tiny niche, and you had to be interested in looking into this sort of thing, and most people don't even bother with reading, so that eliminates a big chunk of the population. If they don't read, if they don't do any sort of kind of basic uh, research on anything, you know, ask questions, and then go and search the answer out, if they don't do that, then they're not ever going to come across something like this. So... Let's try to get through this. Uh, I might make a separate video with commentaries to go with this actual article because there are definite problems with the article and some of them may be in place as a matter of throwing the population off from, like, again, f potentially fully comprehending the basic process when they go into court, how things are supposed to be going and how they're actually going. Okay, the action could mean a loss of hundreds of thousands of dollars in revenue. Hey, real quick correction, more like hundreds of millions. Uh, this, this would affect only the one type of situation they're talking about here, which is a failure to appear. But the actual process that they're complaining about is a systemic process that occurs with every single type of traffic uh, related thing. A failure to appear being traffic related if you fail to appear for a violation or, or uh, I don't know, petty misdemeanor. Okay, law enforcement officials have begun canceling at least 175,000 arrest warrants for people who failed to appear in Orange County Municipal Court, speared by an appellate court ruling that the warrants were unconstitutionally issued by court clerks instead of prosecutors. Okay, real quick for everybody, uh, especially people not in California or familiar with California uh, courts, they have essentially four levels. You have the superior courts, then you have the appellate division of the superior courts, like this right here. That's what this is. And then above that one, you have the California Court of Appeals. And above that's the California Supreme Court. So there's f essentially four tiers that you deal with when you're appealing things. I actually did uh, wind up appealing something at the appellate level. Uh, but that's for another video. Okay, so actually, and if I seem a bit out of it during this recording... I just got labs back that show that mold toxicity poisoning and uh, it explains a lot of my fatigue issues. Uh, so bear with me. I just really want to get this info out, you know, because if, if something did happen to me, I really don't think uh, most of you out there could stumble on this. The, the internet has been kind of purged of some of the things and, and uh, keywords, search phrases that I use now will never pop up. These uh, issues, so sites like uh, Lawyer Dude site are all 100% in the archive.org website. They're all backed up, but if you've never heard of him, if you didn't know he had a website, you, you wouldn't know where to begin looking on that. So, yeah, uh, let's get through this if we can.
Invalidating the warrants could mean the loss of hundreds of thousands of dollars in revenue to county government from fines paid by defendants, said South Orange County Municipal Court Judge Ronald P. Kraber. Uh, I didn't mention municipal courts, but municipal courts existed back in 1994 in California, and I'm not going to say all, but they don't exist now because any that still are operating are operating as superior courts. They were changed to superior court status. Some of them may have actually closed down. I don't know. I mean, these things are rackets. They probably didn't close down, but they transitioned. Uh, you used to have a separation between municipal courts and superior, and again, they were consolidated. These were they're supposed to be operated as superior courts. They got the title, at least. Okay, so, let's see. It will mean at least temporary reprieves for scofflaws who failed to appear in court for traffic and misdemeanor offenses, he said. The defendants named in the recalled warrants are off the hook, at least for now, Kraber said, but could face arrest again if the orders are reissued by the district attorney's office. Okay, I, I just have to comment real quickly. Obviously, a district attorney does not issue orders. The orders only come from a judge. Uh, what they're basically ob obfuscating in this statement is that the district attorney's office has to file charges. So that's, that's their role in anything. They've got to file charges. Once I file charges, if there's some merit to it, a uh, judge can issue an order you know, for your uh, appearance in court. Okay, so we're concerned with people getting arrested on a warrant for a failure to appear where the statute has been ruled unconstitutional, Kraber said. Uh, the canceled warrants are the result of defendant Kurt Albert Staff's successful legal challenge of a 1989 state law that empowered court clerks to issue arrest warrants for people who failed to appear in court as ordered. Brent Romney, the district court attorney's director of municipal court operations, said his department's position is that the courts don't have the constitutional authority to issue the warrants. We thought staff's position was well taken, Romney said. Although it's still up in, the, up in the air, what's going to happen? While the case is on appeal, Romney said the district attorney's office intends to reissue many warrants after obtaining affidavits from court clerks to verify that the d defendants failed to appear. See, these are required steps, and they were, they were being called out on it. And they, the fact that uh, the court clerks would have to make a statement under oath and that is essentially going to be a you know exhibit a in a case against you for failure to appear well this person is stating under oath that you didn't appear so you know that that whole step isn't being performed in plenty of courts in plenty of scenarios where it's required to occur and in this case, for a failure to appear. Warrants older than a year probably won't be reissued, he said, because we feel the statute of limitations is run. See, even in, in my uh, recent videos on the uh, statute of limitations, where I was calling that out as a... Uh, over, uh, reversible error by the lower court Hawaii's got one year on their violations slash infractions and also on their petty misdemeanors the no driver's license no insurance California's the same but this was 94 also don't forget that in adopting the law, the legislature intended to create a cost-effective method of issuing the arrest warrants, Kraber said. But the appellate department of the Superior Court 
ruled July 8 that the warrant issuing procedure is unconstitutional because it gives powers to court clerks that are reserved for the district attorney's office, he said. The ruling could have statewide impact because the same practice is followed in many counties, Craver said. The 4th Appellate District in Santa Ana agreed Monday to hear an appeal of the case filed by Orange County Municipal Court officials. Oral arguments are set for September. The Orange County Superior Court's Appellate Department overturned five $140 fines for failure to appear that were levied against staff. A Laguna Niguel resident who failed to show up in court for motorcycle speeding tickets. The panel said traffic court clerks using computers to systematically charge traffic offenders violates the constitutionally mandated separation of powers. This is raised in my appeals, and I believe I mentioned it in my trial over here for the uh, no driver's license case. Okay, there is an apparent, if not actual, conflict of interest, the panel ruled. County Counsel Terry Andrus argued unsuccessfully that the appeal of staff's charges was a direct attack upon the court's inherent statutory powers to control its proceedings and efficiently administer justice. to control its proceedings. They don't create the proceedings. Somebody's supposed to come in there and have some sort of issue. Right? The county prosecutor comes in. They want to enter charges in a case against somebody and they give the grounds. They give a formal uh, filing. And that initiates criminal proceedings. So the court doesn't have that authority to initiate them, and that's exactly what they're doing in a situation where they allow a court clerk to create a case and give the charge. They're, they're acting as a plaintiff and or a prosecuting attorney, and then they're also wearing the clerk hat and creating the case and a case number, however they create that. I, I don't know if they decide that or if it's uh, s somewhat random. Anyways, uh, it's it's very obvious that this isn't, you know, they're, they're very clearly violating separation of powers. Anybody could see that. You have two different functions involved there. Okay, under the practice declared unconstitutional clerks issued warrants for defendants who failed to appear offering them a choice of paying a fine or jail time Craver said fines usually run from $225 up to the vicinity of several hundred dollars if it gets too high a person will just take the jail time uh, take note they give them jail time for fine only offenses it, it sounds like right here and we abolish debtors prison law enforcement agencies have been advised by the county's municipal courts to recall all warrants issued under the 1989 law and have begun doing so according to Kraber and a sheriff's department memo memo issued Wednesday. Our estimate is that this invalidates approximately 175,000 warrants. Captain Jack Devereux of the Sheriff's Support Services Division wrote in the memo issued to county sheriff stations. I think there's a lot more than what's been named by the Sheriff's Department. Lieutenant Dan Martini of Sheriff's Department said he could not comment on such a major order without take, talking to Sheriff Brad Gates, who could not be reached for comment. Oh, gee, how convenient. Is it not obvious <laughs> what what they're doing right here? I, some people might not 
I don't know. It this could be the mold affecting my my uh, intuition on this, but some people don't make the connections that they should when they read things like this put in a paper. I mean, they're they're blatantly telling you that this guy's hiding behind the other guy. Couldn't be reached for comment. That's a public official. So five days out of the week, their ass is supposed to be sitting in a chair or doing something related to being the uh, the sheriff. Okay, That means they've got to be accessible to the public. And they can't be reached for comment by the biggest paper around. Give me a break. So... keep quiet. That's one of the things uh, the media will tend to do. I mean, they, they could have helped them on that too, telling them, you know, oh, we'll just put down that there's no comment. Uh, they control information. So again, that's, you know, stuff like this is, I mean, this is huge. This this never came up as a big like debate throughout the country. You know, this this should have raised a lot of discussion, but it didn't. All right, let's try to get through this. Focus. Judge Kraber said it is unknown how the ruling will affect the causes or cases of people who have already served jail time or paid fines stemming from warrants issued by court clerks since the law went into effect in 1989. I can't really predict how courts will deal with those cases, Kraber said. I don't know what the remedy will be on that. Corruption. <laughs> That's the remedy. They'll just try to sweep it under the rug with, rug with the assistance of papers. And, uh, I don't know, maybe they do some sort of agreement. You know, like, judges will uh, ensure that the paper gets in for the next big, high-profile uh, celebrity case. And, you know, they'll have access to the courtroom or something. You know, they, they can prohibit the media from being there. Let's see, so I'm hoping to get about three more LA Times articles on this case posted. If I can, I'll do them as quickly as I can, but again, I don't feel great. Trying, where's the guy's name? I'm trying to get the uh, guy's name up here, so here we go. This guy, Kurt Albert Staff. If you live in California and you're in Orange County or you visit Orange County, the one court, I believe it's the Court of Appeals 4th District. I think it's a 4th District. That's in uh, OC. It's down near the, uh, it's also near a federal uh, court building. And it's in Santa Ana. Actually, yeah, it's in Santa Ana. So, if you want to do some research, you can go to that building. The Court of Appeals, I believe, may have the Superior Court's Appellate Division archive files. So you'll, you, you'll, have to, you'll want to call on that. But that's where you would find the original ruling by the Appellate Court that is mentioned... Right here, this is the appellate or superior court appellate division. They don't put the division part in there, but that is an actual part of the name, appellate division. If you contact the appeals courts, you can ask them, can I access the superior court of appeals or uh, let's see, superior court appellate division archive files? at this location and if they tell you that it's there then you can go in and you give them the case information uh, more more of which I may have to try to dig up or you can try digging up on your own but if you have that case, case information then you can actually get copies of that ruling which has never been published anywhere other than by lawyer dude and 
I've got that transcription. I'll try to put it in video after I get the series of LA Time articles posted. You you really want to see this because the this division has three judges allocated to it or allocated to each case. And so in this situation, if I remember correctly and I'm pretty sure this is accurate, all three judges ruled that this was a violation of separation of powers and that, you know, it it was just not a job that the court clerk was allowed to do. They, they weren't allowed to go through and just automatically start a case. Just because they've got the power to sit there and create cases doesn't mean that they're allowed or authorized, in this case authorized, to initiate criminal prosecutions. A failure to appear is a misdemeanor in California. That's a criminal prosecution. So, the, you know, it's kind of like, I don't know, uh, it's kind of like a court clerk just drawing up uh, orders as if they were from a judge signing them themselves and issuing an order to you you know it's just it's not something they're authorized to do it's it's outside of the scope of their their job their job requires that first an authorized person come to them and make a filing if it's just like a simple civil case where two people are suing each other then you know, one person needs to make that filing. And that's it. They've, they've got an authorized party. This person has a complaint. They have everything written out here. So let's go ahead. We'll give this a number and they go, you know, on a court schedule. But, uh, you know, I... So here's an instance where things are a problem. When I went into the federal courthouse in uh, Los Angeles when I have my lawsuit against the uh, judge, is it a judge in that one? Yeah, the uh, judge, the traffic supervisor, etc. for the Bellflower case that I had dismissed, and I sued them because they created a case against me without having what they needed to create the case. It's an, it's, that's entirely reasonable. Hell, I had a paper from a prosecutor saying that they weren't going to prosecute. And yet the courthouse and those court officials and the judge tried to get me to plead to something that shouldn't have even been created. You know, the, the clerk had no authority to create that case. Well, when I went to this federal building and I was just starting the lawsuit there against them for a viola violation of rights, right in front of me, and this is funny because I've been indigent. I haven't been able to work. I live off the good graces of family members, and, you know, I love them for that. But this other person in front of me was clearly what most people think of as indigent. I'm not, you know, I'm not on the streets. I'm not a bum. I get to shower, etc. You know, I got a roof over my head, food on the table. I just don't have money coming in. Can't, you know, it's, it's, I'm, like, physically not able to carry any of that stuff out with my uh, tendon injuries. But... This guy was what most people call a bum. That's a, what most people think of with an indigent. This guy walked into the uh, courthouse and was complaining about the, I don't know, tripping somewhere on a sidewalk, and he described the location, and that court clerk at that window told him, well, you know, like, I can't help you out, because the guy was, he just came in, no paperwork or anything, just... I, I fell and I hurt my back outside, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, he just seemed like somebody looking for a quick buck. And he, I've been injured for a very long time. Chronic injury, like torn t hamstring tendons that I've had to live with. I, I absolutely hate malingerers. This guy came across like he was faking. But that court clerk said, well, you fell on a state sidewalk. That's a state court case, so we can't do anything for you. And he turned him around. That bum did not have the position to sue anybody through the federal court system. So that, that court clerk shut that down right away. He wasn't authorized to be making a lawsuit. So he sent him, you know, told him, that's, you know, go to the state 
state courthouse, you know, if you got a problem with uh, something that happened in state, you know, territory or jurisdiction. So, anyway, it's the same situation with this this uh, failure to appear in a court clerk making these filings. Um, I'll try to wrap this up right now. Actually, I'm I'm kind of going got brain fog and I just want this to get out because this is my second time recording this video actually the first time uh, wasn't very good either but some of the info I'm giving is very good it's just the flow of things isn't great my, my brain is just fried from this mold so uh, until next time uh, I'm going to actually tack on my, my uh, ending here I've got something that I've got to try to standardize to make this process editing and everything a little smoother. Alright guys, until next time.